I just wanted to get good grades and to do well. But it also made me realize that I have a lot of career goals. You're there to get a full college experience, not only participate in your sport, but participate in things outside of that. And it's all about growing as a person. My coaches have helped me with figuring out who I really am. Their lives are dedicated for us to succeed. Welcome inside Geisman Gymnasium once again. I'm CJ Sellner on the Cougar Sports Network. Irene Swift on the camera for you this afternoon as we host an action here on a Saturday evening, early evening we'll give it now, snowy here in River Forest, but it's beautiful here inside Geisman for a big action matchup here between the Scarlet Hawks of Illinois Tech and the Concordia University Chicago Cougars. Setting the scene, CUC welcomes third place Illinois Tech into Geisman Gymnasium, looking for their second straight home victory. Scouting the Scarlet Hawks, Illinois Tech sits high atop the NACC standings with just three conference losses coming to Aurora, MSOE, and Concordia, Wisconsin. Scarlet Hawk Jake DiGiorgio ranks first in the NACC in rebounds per game, averaging 13.3. Two-time NACC Player of the Week, Anthony Mosley Jr., leads IIT, shooting 39% from behind the arc this season. IIT is new to the conference this season. They will take on CUC for the first time since November of 2004. CUC won that one 67-53. A key matchup to keep an eye on will be in the post here today between Landon Gladney and DiGiorgio. Between those two, Gladney ranking just behind with a 12.5 rebounds per game average. Senior guard Mitch Policier has left his mark in CUC baseball, or excuse me, CUC basketball lore, ranking fifth in the all-time scoring list with 1,500 over 1,500 career points. Over the last four games, Policier has scored 23 points or more and has combined for 115 points. He is currently first in the NACC and ranks 17th nationally with a 23 points per game average. Starting lineups coming up in just a few moments. Around the horn in the NACC, CUC is first among scoring offenses, averaging 88 points per game. CUC points per game average is also good for 22nd out of 416 teams across Division III basketball. CUC also stands 66 in the country, averaging 29.3 defensive rebounds per game. Mosley, DiGiorgio, the two to watch for on the IIT side. On the CUC side, you always talk about Policier, Meeks, and Gladney. Those three are the motor that makes this thing go on the Cougar side. 40 minutes of basketball action coming up here from Geisman. Once again, thank you for joining us here for Nexion this Saturday evening in River Forest. Starting lineups coming up in just a few moments. Cougar basketball, as always, powered by Lutheran Public Radio. Listen to sacred music anytime, anywhere on the LPR app. Cougar basketball also brought to you in part by Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A and Melrose Park eat more chicken. Let's meet the starting lineups first for the visiting Scarlet Hawks of Illinois Tech. At a guard, a 6'2 senior from Chicago, Illinois, number two, Anthony Mosley Jr. At a guard, a six foot freshman from Broadville, Illinois, number five, Ahmad Muhammad. At a forward, a 6'6 senior from Ironwood, Michigan, number 21, Dave DiGiorgio. At a, the center position, the 6'7 junior from Las Vegas, Nevada, number 22, Max Hizataki. And at a forward, a 6'6 senior from Damascus, Oregon, number 32, Parker Jonkis. Head coach of the Scarlet Hawks is Todd Kelly. Assistant coaches Ebenezer Nunu and Terrence Gray. And let's meet the starting lineup for the Concordia University Chicago Cougars. At a guard, a 6'3 senior from Pialop, Washington, number 10, Mitch Policier. At a guard, a 6'2 junior from Braidwood, Illinois, number 12, Neil O'Donnell. At a guard, a 6'2 sophomore from Aurora, Colorado, number 13, Jalen Meeks. At a forward, the 6'4 junior from Elmwood Park, Illinois, number 33, Hassan Baspus. And at a forward position, 
a 6'5 freshman from Chicago, Illinois, number 34, Landon Gladney. Head coach of the Cougars is Randy Rogers. Assistant coach is Ricky Hampton and Matt Kearney. 40 minutes of basketball scheduled here from Geisman. It will be a good one. CUC looking to get themselves involved in the playoff race here. Currently sitting one win and two losses behind sixth place, Aurora in the NACC. CUC is going to have an opportunity over the next few games to get themselves back into it. Four games before CIT. Beginning here today, they will host Benedictine on the 15th, just a few days from now, before heading on the road. We'll only see CUC three times here in January on the road besides that. And then you talk about getting into February, that's crunch time with just five games in February to close out the regular season. Glad you're here with us once again. I'm CJ Sellner, Irene Swift on the camera for you today. CUC going left to right across your screen in the white jerseys with maroon numbers and gold trim. IIT in the black away jerseys going right to left, red numbers and white trim. IIT controls the opening tip and we are underway. Quickly into the high post, IIT, a team that can score the basketball in their own right this season and there's going to be a quick whistle underneath. Follows on Jalen Meeks, his first personal. Illinois Tech five and three on the road this season, sitting six and three overall. CUC at home is three and three. All of their wins coming here inside guys and last win was an overtime dramatic victory over rival Dominican last Saturday. CUC falling on the road to Concordia, Wisconsin earlier this week. Second free throw coming, and it rims in and out no good. Out of the hands of Mosley. Mosley, a guard from Whitney Young, one of the perennial Chicago powerhouses here in the state of Illinois high school-wise. Baspus steps into a three that's long, no good. Cougars double in the post. Open look for three for Muhammad is up and good. IIT, a team that shoots 32% from downtown on the year. Inside drive, Gladney, tough shot, no good. Gladney's going to be tasked inside. That's a big man in Max Hizataki at 6'7 that he has to deal with. Inside, Policia on Hizataki. Kick, open three is no good. Meeks will bring it down. O'Donnell wants to drive, gets cut off, needing an outlet now to Baspus. Policier pull up jumper from the right side is short, no good. Last time inside guy, then we watched Policier drop to career high 40. It's been a long time since Cougar fans have seen a 40 plus game here. Drive and a foul called, no, a travel violation. As Mosley hit the ground, he's up limping. Just under two minutes in here at Geisman. So you see still looking for their first basket of the day against Illinois Tech. O'Donnell needs somewhere to go. It's to Meeks in the lane. Tough shot. He nearly had his feet taken out from under him. It's off the mark. Baspus trying to match up with Hizataki in the post. Feet inside, tough shot off balance, and Hizataki will put it up and in. Hizataki averages 29 points per game this, or minutes per game this season, averaging 14 points. Shot no good, second chance tip no good. Illinois Tech looking to get out and run ahead to Mosley. Feet inside and a foul called before the shot. 
Foul will be on number 12, Neil O'Donnell, his first, team's second. Illinois Tech ball underneath. They'll have 24 to shoot. Inside to Hizutake, trying to work on Baspus, and there will be a traveling violation before the shot. 17.09 remaining here in the first. Illinois Tech off to a 6-0 start. Feed is to Policier. Everybody knows he's the one you need to stop as a foul will be called, and Policier will go to the line and shoot two. Foul is on number... 21, Jake DiGiorgio, the seniors first. Two free throws coming here for Policier. First rattles home. Policier on the season, a 78% free throw shooter, 67 of 86. Has a chance today with 18 points to move into fourth place all time in CUC scoring history. 6-2, Illinois Tech leads here in the early goings. Inside Hizataki against Baspus. Wraparound layup is up and good. Illinois Tech has shown up with a lot of energy on the road here to start this one today. O'Donnell dribbles through, now to Baspus. Picked up by Hizataki. Drive, flipped inside. Policier, fadeaway jumpers too strong. CUC 0 of 6 shooting here to start today. Quickly ahead, shot blocked away by Meeks. Last touch by Illinois Tech and out of bounds. Muhammad tried to get one up over the outstretched arms of Meeks, but Meeks countered with his ability. Meeks, one of the more athletic guards in this conference, creates a, a lot of matchup issues for players because he can play inside just as well as he can get things done around the arc. Kick ball on a back cut will keep it with CUC. And we'll have a substitution on the IIT side. It will be number 23. It'll be Otis Real, the 5'10 freshman from Rome, Italy. Two policier guarded by John Kiss. Jumpers off the mark. CUC still looking for their first field goal a day. Inside Hizataki, and he'll be fouled and go to line to shoot two. Hizataki's used his size and had his way down low here in the early goings against CUC, creating position. Police had to come in and keep him from having the easy lay-in. We'll have a timeout on the floor taken by the Cougars. It'll be a 30-second timeout on the floor. Cougar basketball brought to you by Lutheran Public Radio. Listen to sacred music anytime, anywhere on the LPR app. CUC will be home again on Tuesday night when they host Benedictine University. The Eagles coming in here at 7 p.m. on Tuesday. Benedictine currently sitting fourth in the NACC standings this year. Don't forget CIT, CIT tickets are on sale now. You can get your pre-sale ticket to save you five bucks at cuchicago.edu slash CIT. Looking forward to heading to Ann Arbor, Michigan. The 24th through the 26th, CUC taking on host Ann Arbor at a 8.15 Eastern start. First free throw up and good. Hizataki on the season, a 77% free throw shooter. He's been to the free throw line quite a bit. He has a seconds long, no good, but an offensive board will continue the possession. Now 15 to shoot, Mosley trying to work off a screen. Gets it back, now with 11 to shoot. Across inside Hizataki against Baspus and an offensive foul called on Hizataki. 
gave just enough of a shoulder to get the offensive foul. Fifteen twenty remaining in the first. Nine two your score. Meeks has it, drives, jumper in the lane is up and good. Into the high post. Now farther right and John kiss. Inside Hizataki, baby hooks too strong. Offensive board is put back up and in. Hizataki with seven of IIT's 11 points here in the early goings. Inside Gladney, tough angle, couldn't get it to go. Scarlet Hawks look to get out quickly in transition. Hizataki at the top. Again now swung back to Mosley. Drives, kicks at the top. Three is up and good out of the hands of Otis Reale. Ideal start here for the Scarlet Hawks, shooting 62% here in the early goings. CUC with just one basket. They're one of their first nine from the floor. Bounce pass inside. Baspus trying to work on his attack. He has to kick it back out. Now CUC with five to shoot. Policier has it, wants to drive. Layup, no good. And an offensive foul called on Policier. It was just a slight bump, but Real was set. So that will be foul number two on Policier. That's a big one if you're a Cougar fan. Gardner checked in, the 6'3 senior from Chicago for IIT. They're going to keep Policier out there with those two personals. 13-33 remaining here in the first. It's a dangerous way to play, but you cannot have Policier on the bench extended, a player that plays on average 36 minutes a game. Meeks quickly head. Tough jumper up and good. See if Hizataki on the bench can, can allow CUC to get on a run as a second chance put back by DiGiorgio is up and good. Plissier has it, drives, finger roll up and good. Drive and a kick and they're going to get a blocking foul called on Baspus. So the two referees, we had one block, one charge. We'll see what the, they decide to go with. So they're going to have a conversation. Coach Rogers has shortened his rotation over the last few games, playing just eight players against CU Dub. And it's kind of how he played it against Dominican as well. So we're going to get our decision here. So they're going to give a double foul. So it was a double foul. You don't see those every day. So, so it'll be against Baspus and, and Real. So each of them, for them, it's their first. So it'll be Illinois Tech ball. So Scarlet Hawk ball with a fresh 30. So after the odd, Odd call, Illinois Tech has it. Pull up jumper, swatted away. Possession continues though on the offensive board. Go. 
All the way around the circle. Now five to shoot. Three from the right, right wing, well off the mark. Offensive board, though, is put back in as shot clock was about to expire by Jake DiGiorgio. Eighteen eight, Scarlet Hawks lead. Jumper for Gladney is good. CUC is going to need somebody to get going here midway through this first half. Good look for three from the wing is up and good for number 10, Jake Bruns. Feed inside, Bass Bus is up and good. CUC trying to keep themselves in this game in the early goings. So you see five of their last six from the field after a very tough start. 18-footer rims in and out, no good. Illinois Tech out-rebounding CUC 13-5 thus far. Three off the wing, no good for Turner. Offensive board, though, Gladney's no good. Too strong. Lots of movement within this Illinois Tech offense thus far today. They've had a lot of good looks and a lot of good second chance looks as well. Bounce pass was deflected. DiGiorgio has it. Now five to shoot. Right side, pump fake, baseline jumper. Catches just enough of the rim to keep play going. Plisse has it, drives and slips. Now gets double teamed and loses it out of bounds and it'll be Scarlet Hawk ball. Substitutions on the IIT side include number five, Ahmad Muhammad and Max Hizataki. Raymond Falk will come in on the CUC side replacing Bass Bus. Pass is thrown out of bounds by Bruns. Muhammad was trying to get towards the basket and it got thrown out of bounds. Substitution on the IIT side, Anthony Mosley Jr. returning. Mosley doesn't spend a lot of time on the bench either, much like Policier, averaging 33.2 minutes per game. Turner has its spin move inside. Tough layup, no good, but a foul. Put him at the line to shoot two. Foul is on number 10, Bruns. That'll be Bruns' first personal. Two free throws coming here for Turner. Turner earning a lot of playing time over the last few weeks for Coach Randy Rogers. Front end of two is good. On the season, shooting 73% from the free throw line. Meeks will get replaced by Sawyer Conklin. One more free throw to come. One more free throw to come here for Turner. 9.49 remaining in the first and the second is good. Illinois Tech leading by seven. A lot of pace to this game between these two sides. Inside Hezataki. Kicks Muhammad. And across they're going to get Bruns for a travel on the pump fake. Six turnovers thus far for Illinois Tech. Those six turnovers have resulted in six CUC points. 21-14, 9-23 remaining in the first. Up top, Conklin, back to Turner on the wing. Looking to create, and he'll get called for the travel in the lane. Jalen Meeks will step back in, replacing Policier. 
IIT scoreless over the last two minutes and 25 seconds. Cougars able to double. IIT escapes to Hizutake. Inside Hizutake tries to go baseline, kicks, good look for three is no good. Gladney pulls down rebound number five of the day. Conklin to the rim, high off the glass, no good. And offensive board will result in two free throws for the Cougars. Fouls on number 25. It'll be on Milos Dugalik, the 6'7 freshman from Des Plaines. Two free throws coming here for Gladney. First is short, no good. Gladney on the season, a 62% free throw shooter. Sawyer Conklin, Neil O'Donnell, Gladney, Meeks, and Falk on the floor for CUC. 844 remaining here in the first. Second free throw is good. CUC back within six. IIT's headed out to as many as 11 here in the first half. Drive inside, count it with a foul as CUC lost track of Dugalik underneath. So the foul will be against Gladney, his first. One more free throw to come. One free throw to come, and it's off back iron, no good. Meeks tried to make a move and lost the handle on the basketball. Now outlets it to O'Donnell. O'Donnell trying to break his man down. Tough shot got partially blocked by John Kiss, and they're going to get a foul on CUC, and it's going to result in free throws on the other end. Foul is on O'Donnell, his second personal. So now Policier and O'Donnell in foul trouble here early. One and one situation, sending John Kiss to the line. Policier returns for Falk. John Kiss on the season, a 69% free throw shooter, 9 of 13. Front end of the one and one is up and good. One more free throw to come here, trying to make it a 10 point game. And he will. Just over eight minutes remaining here in the first half. IIT has led it the whole way. O'Donnell handoff makes left side. Looks to drive, lost it initially. Now will kick to O'Donnell, 12 to shoot. Gladney has it, lost it again as he wanted to drive on his Ataki. Pass by Mosley is deflected and stolen away. to Meeks in the lane and he lost a handle on it once again. Five CUC turnovers here in the first half. 7.25 remaining in the half. Mosley will pull from three, rims off, no good. Mosley has been quiet here in the first half. That was just his first shot attempt in 10 minutes of playing time. Policier now with it and 17 to shoot. Pull up jumper is no good. Mosley will bring it down for the Scarlet Hawks. Back to our cut, layup blocked away by Conklin. And they're gonna get an off the ball foul 
on Illinois Tech. That'll be against Hizitaki for a push on Meeks. That'll be his second personal. And it'll be a timeout on the floor. 30-second timeout taken by the Cougars. 6.47 remaining in the first. Cougar basketball brought to you in part by Doc Ryan's. Doc Ryan's on Madison Street. Always there for your Cougar post-game needs. Ten-point game here at Geisman. 6.47 remaining in the first. Policier leads CUC. Policier and Meeks lead CUC with four points apiece. Hizitaki leads all scorers with seven on three of four shooting. Gladney already with six rebounds. One of the rare times against CU Dub this week, he did not pick up a double-double. He has 11 double-doubles on the season through 13 games. You talk about making an impact as a freshman. You have to argue he might be your lead contender for NACC Freshman of the Year this year. Be hard-pressed to find somebody doing what he's doing. Double-double average on the year. Gladney with it and 20 to shoot at the top. Conklin with a catch and shoot three and it's good. Sawyer Conklin trying to get the Cougar bench into it and the Cougars back within seven. Swung now left side. Muhammad to Mosley. Passed up on a three. He'll settle for an 18 footer that he buries. IIT shooting 45% thus far. CUC shooting 31. Backdoor cut, Gladney, and he'll put it home. Gladney now with five points. Inside layup is too easy. The CUC did not get around any help side defense at all. 29-20. Policier hands off Conklin. Looking to drive, got cut off. Backed out to Policier, now with 13 to shoot. Inside Gladney, tough shot fading away, won't roll home. Jumper well off the mark, saved in bounds, and O'Donnell will come away with it. O'Donnell looking to push, he'll have to back off as IIT did a good job getting back in transition. Conklin for three, and it's good. He has CUC back within six. Three this time off the side, no good from Muhammad. Turn around, O'Donnell is up and good. And we got a timeout on the floor taken by the Scarlet Hawks. So you see on a run, 5-0 run over the last minute 26. It'll be a full timeout on the floor. We'll take one too with the timeout on the floor. 418 remaining here in the first. CUC trailing by four. You're watching Cougar Basketball powered by Lutheran Public Radio. Listen to sacred music anytime, anywhere. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school, it's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Back inside Geisman Gymnasium once again, coming out of the timeout, 418 remaining here in the first. Cougars on a quick 5-0 run, Sawyer Conklin Man, you give that man an inch, he'll knock down a three in your face in a hurry. He's got two of them, and he's helped CUC claw back into this 29-25. IIT's led by as many as 11. 
418 remaining in the first IIT ball. CUC is continuing to frustrate Mosley Jr. Just one of two from the field. On the other side, you look at it on IIT's perspective, they've done a good job shutting down Policier, who's one of six so far today. It's to Mosley on the wing with 10 to shoot, trying to go to work on Meeks. He'll pull up long two that rims off no good. Gladney will bring down his eighth rebound of the day. Conklin has it, hesitates, passed up on a look for three. Now it'll be Policier. Bounce pass across to Meeks. Gladney has it, 15-footer, no good. IIT a team that shoots 44% from the field on the year, just a couple ticks below that so far today. IIT with a big mismatch in the post. They have Conklin right now on John Kiss. Now they'll feed it inside to John Kiss. Kicks back out. Pump fake. They want to get it back inside, and Conklin deflected it, and CUC will come away with the steal. Police will get it back from Gladney. Looks to drive. Got cut off. Baby hook right side is good. And Policier got, gets CUC back within a possession. Both teams in the bonus here. Mosley had it slip to the floor and lost it. Fight for the loose ball, and we'll have a jump ball. Possession arrow favoring CUC. Substitutions on the IIT side include Hizataki and number 10, Bruns, replacing Mosley and John Kiss. It's been a 7 0 run for CUC over the last three minutes and 13 seconds. 9 2 run if you go a little bit farther than that back. Chance to tie or take the lead here. O'Donnell flips it, short corner to Meeks. Back to O'Donnell, steps into a three from the top, and it's good. CUC with their first lead of the day at 30-29. Coming up on the final two minutes of the first half. Wanting to get it inside, his attacking is stolen away. Fight for the loose ball, and there's going to be a foul called. on Meeks, his second personal, one in one situation. So that's a second on Meeks. So Policier, O'Donnell, and Meeks all with two personals each. So one in one situation here for IIT going to the line. It'd be Otis Real at the line, the freshman guard. First of two is no, or first of one and one is no good. Hizataki got the offensive board. Second chance jumper came up short out of the hands of DiGiorgio. Three from the wing is off the mark out of the hands of Conklin. Inside Hizataki. 16 to shoot, trying to work on Policier. Shot and a foul be called. Meeks got hit in the face. The foul on Policier is his third. Meeks got cut right above the eye, so he'll have to come out of the game. So Jamal Turner will come back in. Hassan Baspus will come back in as well. So it is two shots. So it'll be Hizataki at the line to shoot two. 
trying to retie this game. Chance to take the lead as well. First of two is up and good. One more coming here for Hizataki. He's two of three so far from the charity stripe tonight. Second is good as well. It'll be Parker John Kiss returning for Hizataki. Minute 20 remaining here in the opening half. It's been entertaining to say the least between these two sides. Haven't met since 2004. First time they're ever meeting as a conference matchup. IIT joining the NACC this season. 10 to Turner. He'll take a three from the top and it's good. CUC reclaims the lean at 33-31. CUC four of seven shooting from downtown so far tonight. Policier does have those three fouls for CUC. Tend to shoot inside. Good ball movement, open look for three is good out of the hands of Jake Bruns. Second three of the day for Bruns. Shot clock turned off, Cougars will take the last shot of the first half. Now under 10, O'Donnell to the rim, shot no good. Second chance is up and good for Landon Gladney. And that will do it for the first half of play. Cougars lead this one 35-34 in what was a very entertaining first half here at Geisman. Going over some totals here in the first half, Landon Gladney leads CUC with seven points. In total, CUC had seven different players record multiple points in that half. CUC shoots 43% from the four, 57% from three. For IIT, Hizataki leads with nine points on three of four shooting. DeGiorgio has six rebounds. Bruns has six points as IIT shoots 42.9% in the half and 44% from three. We'll take a break, get you set up with second half action in just a little bit here from Geisman. A fun second half on the way. You're listening to Cougar Basketball, powered by Lutheran Public Radio. Listen to sacred music anytime, anywhere on the LPR app. For the love of the game, that's what it's all about, they say. But for those of us who are Division Three student-athletes, it's more than that, a lot more. Sure, the game is important, but as we work so hard to build both mind and body, it's more about team and the schools and communities we represent. And for the many of us blessed with the strength to compete in sport at the college level, we understand that with what we were given comes a special obligation. An obligation not merely to work towards a personal best in the classroom or in the sport we love but rather an obligation to help those who have their own special needs and whose love for the game is no less intense. That is why NCAA Division III teamed up with Special Olympics. For Special Olympics athletes, victory belongs not only to those who first cross the line, but to all of those who compete and endure. They are challenged in ways we cannot imagine. They are survivors who test themselves harder and with greater joy than we will ever know. Since August of 2011, we and others from Division III campus communities have volunteered more than a quarter million hours, time away from the classroom and practice field, reaching across the country to coach and mentor Special Olympics athletes. And to learn, as we all do, that in giving, we receive so much more in return. Sport ennobles us, and in giving the gift of sport to those for whom it seemed an impossible dream, we are working to make this a better world. Help us keep that dream alive. Be part of it. Get involved. You can make a difference.
Back inside, guys, in gymnasium. Once again, I'm CJ Selner. Irene Swift on the camera for you today. Getting you some scores around the knack before we get second half play underway. Rockford leading Dominican down the street by one. That game at the half. Lakeland trailing MSOE. That game at the Kern Center, 38-30. As that is getting ready to start the second half. CU Dub leads Aurora, 42-35 at home. Marion and Wisconsin Lutheran getting set to get underway. And Benedictine trails Edgewood by one, that game at Benedictine in Lyle. For this one here, CUC leads by one at the break over Illinois Tech in what was a very entertaining first half. Saw IIT build up a lead to as many as 11 in that half. CUC coming back over those last seven minutes of that half really turned it on all of a sudden getting threes by Sawyer Conklin that kind of started things going and Cougars added on from there. You talk about Turner getting involved, you talk about O'Donnell getting involved. When you have a Mitch Policier that's playing with three fouls, so CUC had to do things a little bit differently, quite frankly, as they were able to do it. They forced 10 IIT turnovers in that half and that resulted in 11 points and those turnovers to point why CUC's in this game where it is as it stands. For IIT, they got out early. Hizitaki is a big man that CUC has not really found out how to defend very well. It's now the job for IIT to get it in there. They also really want to get their leading scorer, Anthony Mosley Jr., back involved. He averages 17.2 points per game, held to just three points on one of three shooting in that first half. So he was not overly involved in that half. It was very busy otherwise. A lot of fun, 20 more minutes to go scheduled here inside Geisman and we are back underway. It'll be Illinois Tech ball and it turns into a quick turnover. Meeks backed it out as he didn't have numbers going forward. CUC going with O'Donnell, Meeks, Basbus, Gladney and Conklin to start the second half. Policia on the bench. On the IIT side, it's Mosley, DiGiorgio, Hizitaki, Jonkis and Muhammad. Mosley to the rim and count it with a foul in transition. Foul on Basbus is his second personal. Foul trouble in the first half for CUC. Policier had three, O'Donnell and Meeks both had two. And Policier will enjoy his quick break, 26 seconds into the second half and he's back on the floor. CUC had seven different scores in that first half. Raymond Falk's the only one that's played that hasn't scored. As we said the other day that Coach Rogers has definitely shortened his bench over the last few games, and it's turned into a lot of success thus far. CUC turns it over. Here's Itaki with it at the top. Right side, Muhammad. Now 15 to shoot, and they'll give it back to Mosley. Now 10 to shoot, flipped inside, shot, swatted out of bounds. It'll stay with the Scarlet Hawks. That was a tough angle to block that shot, but Gladney was able to keep himself from picking up his second personal. Six to shoot, and the pass was deflected. So Coach Rogers is questioning whether the shot clock should have ran a second off. It's tough when you're not in the NBA and you don't have those decimal points on your shot clock to really be the full judge of that. Three off the mark, offensive board continues the possession though for IIT. IIT out rebounding, CUC 22 to 18. Pass was, and it was stolen away. Meeks quickly ahead. Layup, up no good. Great job getting back by Parker John Kiss to defend that layup there by Meeks. Hizitaki calling for it in the post. 
Baseline drive all the way around. Three from the right side is off the mark. Tip back out and the possession will continue. Left side, Muhammad, and a foul will be called against CUC on the drive. Fouls on number 13, Meeks. That'll be his third personal. Timeout on the floor. It'll be a 30-second timeout taken by IIT. 18-11 remaining here in the second half. We'll take a quick timeout. Back inside guys in Gymnasium, once again, I'm CJ Sellner. Irene Swift on the camera for you today. We've got a good one thus far here inside Geisman. IIT leading CUC 36-35. CUC able to get a defensive switch and get Meeks and Police off the floor for at least this possession. Both of them playing with three personals. Inside, tough shot, well off the mark. Good job by CUC defending once again inside. Across O'Donnell. Looking to drive, kicks to Baspus. Outside, tough shot, Gladney is off the mark. Inside, Hizataki needs somewhere to go, across. Muhammad has it, good find inside, tough shot, and a foul result in two free throws here for Illinois Tech. Follows on number 33, Baspus. That's his third. So Policier, Meeks, and Baspus all with three personals here on the CUC side. Nobody in foul trouble currently for Illinois Tech. First of two is no good. Policier and Meeks will return. Jake DiGiorgio at the line. Giorgio with four points, averaging 14.8 points per game for the Scarlet Hawks this season. Nor is a 61% free throw shooter. He's been held in check as well. 17-20 remaining here in the second half. Second free throw off back iron, no good. And they're going to get a foul called on the Scarlet Hawks to Giorgio. It's a tough break if you're a Scarlet Hawks fan. Hits his second, but it was really Meeks and Turner that ran into each other. Seventeen ten remaining in the second. Policier with it. Wants to drive, has to kick out to Turner now with ten to shoot. Police say pull up three is no good. Fight for the rebound, and Gladney got it. And they're going to get a foul on Illinois Tech. Foul will be on number two, Mosley, his first. Gladney with 12 rebounds already today to go along with seven points as Conklin returns. Good find, O'Donnell to Meeks, and he got fouled. He'll shoot two. Foul is on number 21 to Giorgio, his third. Meeks at the line to shoot two. First of two is no good, rimmed out, no good. Meeks on the season is a 66% free throw shooter. One more free throw to come. And that one's no good. So a good foul 
on the IIT side. Feed wanting to get inside. Is Ataki able to recover? Now inside to Giorgio, working against Conklin, and he's able to put it up and in. Quick drive, Turner. Layup hit the underside of the rim. IT quickly ahead. Muhammad's layup no good, but CUC turns it right back over. Kick Mosley. And they're going to have a three second violation on IIT. Raymond Folk and Policier return for CUC, replacing Turner and Meeks. CUC looking for their first points of the second half still. As we come up on four minutes in. O'Donnell has it, tough layup, no good. Fight for the, off, for the board and it'll be Hizataki that can pull it away. Mosley will bring it out now, 18 to shoot. He has it, step back, jumper comes up short. Gladney will pr pull down rebound number 14. Conklin has it, and he'll get called for the travel. Turnover number 10 for CUC on the day. Gladney closing in on a career-best rebounding night. He pulled down 17 here inside Geisman against Lakeland on December 5th. Currently sitting at 14. And they're going to get a foul called inside on Raymond Folk. That's his first, team fourth. Meeks will return for Conklin. CUC still looking for their first basket of the half. Inbound was deflected, end up in the hands of DiGiorgio. Real with it now with seven to shoot. Back to Real. Pull up jumper from 15 feet, rims in and out, no good. Hizataki nearly tipped it back in, and it'll be CUC ball. It's been over five minutes now. CUC has not had a basket. They're 0 for 5 from the field here in the half. Police has it, wants to drive. Flips one up and good with the right hand. And it's a scoreless drought. And pulls CUC back within one. IIT did not take advantage of that drought for the Cougars. They had an opportunity to put a little distance there, but were unable to do so. Hand off to Jonkis. Skip pass across. Real will, will queue up a three. That's too long. CUC trying to get out in transition. Policier inside O'Donnell. IIT doing a good job collapsing inside. Long two is up and good out of the hands of Meeks. And CUC reclaims the lead at 39-38. Real gets it inside, and there'll be a foul on the floor called on Gladney. That'll be his second personal. Dugalik will come in for IIT. 13.43 remaining here in the second. IIT on a scoreless drought of their own. Three from the right side is way short out of the hands of DiGiorgio.
Plissier has it, wants to drive. Tough shot coming across will result in two free throws. Two-shot foul, Policier at the line. He's two of two from the charity stripe so far today. Make that three for three. Hassan Baspus comes in for Falk. Substitutions on the IIT side include Gardner and Bur Bruns. Second free throws up and good. O'Donnell picking up, well extended. IIT has been without a basket in the last three minutes and eight seconds. So you see on a 6-0 run during that span. Hizitaki recovers, floaters up and good to end the drought out of the hands of Real. Blissier has it, pull up jumper, no good. Offensive for Gladney, second chance is up and good. Gladney with nine points and 16 boards. My goodness, he's been a big for CUC so far. His attack, he's doubled. Ball movement, open look for three for IIT, comes up short. Offensive board, though, will continue the possession. Low block Hizataki. Pass got deflected. So no over and back. Now under 10. Drive. Real. No good. So you see he'll back it out. Now 20 to shoot. Under 12 remaining. Baspus to Policier. Around the baseline, and he stepped out of bounds. Turner returns for CUC. DiGiorgio will also return on the IIT side, replacing Hizataki. Eleven forty remaining in the second half. Forty-three forty, your score. Low scoring second half thus far. And they're going to get a foul on CUC as Baspus came running out. That'll be his fourth personal. So Baspus, Baspus will have to take a seat. 11-29 remaining in the half. 20 to shoot. As IATL inbound underneath. Now 10 to shoot for IIT. Pass will be deflected out of bounds and it's Cougar ball. See if CUC can make this a two possession game here. They have not led, been led by more than three so far today. Police A backs it out to Turner, now to O'Donnell. Under 15 to shoot. Under 10, Turner. Gladney has it, step back long, two. Used all the rim, but couldn't get it to go down. Now 16 to shoot, right side. Bruns. IIT's been unable to get any movement going inside, but they'll get bailed out here with an off-ball foul that will result in a bonus situation. Foul is on number 12, O'Donnell. That's his third. 
at the line will be number 10, Bronze. Bruns has just attempted two free throws on the season and missed them both. Front end of the one and one is good. One more free throw to come. And it is good. Back to a one point game here at Geisman. A slow second half compared to the intensity that we had early on. Turner has it, wants to drive, kicks it back out to O'Donnell. Now inside Gladney. Left hand, shot no good. Rebound will come away with IIT. Double screen set, but CUC recover. Bruns has it now, 10 to shoot. 15 footer, high arcing shots, no good. And Gladney pulls down his career best tying 17th rebound of the day. And they're going to get a foul called before the shot. Not a bonus situation yet for CUC. Foul be on. IIT's 10, Bruns, his second. His Ataki will return alongside John Kiss on the IIT side. Baspus will also return, replacing Gladney. O'Donnell to inbound. Backed out to Police now with 15 to shoot. Splits the defenders, layup is up and good. 45-42 CUC. IIT one for their last nine from the field. Three from the left side is up and good. IIT needed that one desperately. Real with eight points now. Tied up at 45. Definitely not a score you're used to seeing if you're a Cougar fan this season. They have not played in many low-scoring games as Policier's three is off the mark. High post, Whitehead. Inside, his attacky shot no good. O'Donnell bring it down. Basbus kicks. Turner, three from the wing is too strong. Hizitaki runs it down, his eighth rebound of the day. Closing in on a double-double. Hizitaki averaging just under a double-double in the conference this season. 15 to shoot, inside Whitehead. Backing down, and a foul will be called on a reach-in on Meeks. That's a tough call against Meeks, and that's his fourth personal. Eight minutes showing on the game clock here at Geisman. Four personal fouls against Meeks, as both Meeks and Policier are having a word with the referee. We'll have subs on both sides. It's a one and one situation. They called it before the shot. Conklin will come in alongside Mosley. One and one situation, Whitehead at the line. On the season, Whitehead's just one for three from the free throw line. Front end of the one and one is up and good. One more free throw to come here for Whitehead. And it comes up short, no good. So both Meeks and Baspis playing with four personals for CUC. Be interesting how CUC defends, especially with IIT and how they like to get inside. 
Plissé has it, wants to drive, shot no good. The whole Cougar bench wanted a foul. No whistle, 7.30 remaining in the second. 20 to shoot right side. Wanted to flip to Hizataki, who has to tip it back out. Inside, Hizataki around Policier, and they're going to get him for a hook. Referee was right on top of that one. That's a third personal on Hizataki. Whitehead will take a seat. He gets replaced by DiGiorgio. Basbus also comes out. Conklin will come in for him. The runs Conklin off screens. He'll have it want to drive, and his shot gets sent well out of play. A good save there by Hizataki on the far side. Real has it, feeds Hizataki. Inside, shot swatted out of bounds by Landing Gladney. So 17 to shoot for IIT underneath, leading by one. Real has it, good look for three, is off the mark, no good. Hizataki with the offensive board, and he'll put it up and in. Hizataki with a double-double now, 11 points and 11 boards. Conklin has it, feeds inside Gladney. Hands it off. Policier wants to drive, shot blocked away by Hizataki. Real has it, wanted to flip it inside, but it was knocked away. Now CUC out in transition. Policier against Hizataki, and they're going to get a foul called. Hizataki just skied over Policier, but it'll be two free throws for CUC. Foul on Hizataki is his fourth, so the big man for IIT now in foul trouble. Two free throws coming here for Policia. He's 4 of 4 from the charity stripe so far tonight. CUC has a team 7 for 10. First of two is up and good. Whitehead will return to give his Ataki a breather. You'd assume he'd be out for the next two to three minutes, depending on how this game goes. Second, Policia free throws up and good. And we'll have a timeout on the floor taken by the Cougars. It'll be a full timeout. We'll take one with the timeout on the floor. 6.13 remaining here in the second half. You're listening to Cougar Basketball powered by Lutheran Public Radio. Listen to sacred music anytime, anywhere on the LPR app. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. Back inside Geisman Gymnasium, once again, I'm CJ Sellner. Irene Swift on the camera for you today. Glad you're spending your Saturday evening with us watching action here. IOT and CUC, it's been an entertaining game all evening long. Much different story here in the second half, a low-scoring second half. The two teams combined for 69 points in the first half, just 26 thus far here with just 6.13 remaining in this one. CUC will pick up in the full court. Here trailing by one. Foul troubles on both sides. Hizataki with four for IIT. Meeks and Baspis both with four on the Cougar side. Screen set, feed inside. Hook is up too strong. Offensive board is put up and in by number 21, DiGiorgio. DiGiorgio now with eight points and 10 rebounds. Plissier thought about a three, pump fake, three from the wings, no good. Tipped and Mosley will be able to bring it down.
Mosley will back it out now with 20 to shoot, trying to drive. Creates a little space, but passes on the three. Now 15 to shoot, screen set. DiGiorgio has it, 15 foot jumper is no good. Gladney brings it down. 18 rebounds for the Cougar freshman, a career best. And there will be a foul called before the drive to the hoop. It will be a one and one situation, sending Conklin to the line. Foul will be on number 10, Bruns, his third. One in one situation. And we'll have a sub on the IIT side. Number five, Aman Muhammad, the freshman from Broadville, Illinois, will return. 5-11 remaining in this one. Three-point IIT lead. One and one, and Conklin comes up empty on the first. IIT trying to make this a two-possession game. Mosley has it, drives to the rim, and a left hand and kiss off the glass. Makes it a five-point IIT lead with under five to go. Conklin has it, wanted to step into a three. Now has it to Meeks, 16 to shoot. Trying to go to work on Mosley. Gets double teamed, finds Gladney, layup, count it with a foul. Landon Gladney able to put a finish on it with a foul. Good find by Meeks, who was in trouble. Baspus will come back in for CUC. Foul is on number 34. Correction for IIT, it'll be on number 33. White had his first. The and one free throw rolls home, and it's a two-point game. Mosley has it. Pull up jumper short. Fight for the offensive board, and they're good to have a kicked ball called on IIT and it'll be CUC ball. Cougar ball trailing by two, 4.09 remaining here in the second half. And there's going to be a foul called before the shot, and it'll put O'Donnell at the line to shoot two. Foul is on number five, Ahmad Muhammad. His first, still a one-in-one -one situation, sending Neil O'Donnell to the line to shoot. One and one, six, correction, two shot foul. And O'Donnell sends the first one too strong. O'Donnell on the season, six for eight from the free throw line, 75%. Second free throw is good, and it's a one point ball game. Coming up on our final four minutes of scheduled action here from guys. When last time we saw the Cougars, it was an overtime win over Dominican. Mosley needs an outlet, and it's inside to Hizataki. Hizataki trying to back down Baspis. Shot off the mark, no good. CUC with a chance to tie or take the lead here. Policier has it. He has 14 points, but not, has not had his best shooting day as he dribbles that one off his foot and out of bounds. So we're going to have an official timeout. Neil O'Donnell's knee is bleeding. So. So they're, they're going to put Turner in for O'Donnell. 
3.29 remaining here in the second half. Cougars within one. IIT's led by as many as 11. CUC has led no more than by three. They less led with just over nine minutes remaining in this game. Screen set for Mosley. Cougars switch across the board on the screens. Mosley has it, drives. Working against Meeks, shot blocked out of bounds. And last touch by Hizataki, it'll be Cougar ball. Turner to run the point, coming up on the final three minutes. It was a nice play by Meeks, especially going with those four personals. Police aid to the hole, finds Gladney, who's able to put it off the glass and in, and Cougars take a one-point lead. CUC with three timeouts remaining, IIT with four. Muhammad to the rim, tough shot and a foul. We'll put him at the line to shoot two. Foul is on Landon Gladney, his third personal, team ninth. Two free throws coming here for Muhammad. Muhammad on the season, a 70% free throw shooter, 14 to 20. First is short, no good. O'Donnell will return for Baspis. One more free throw to come, and it's good. Tied up at 53. Both teams will be in the double bonus for the remaining 233 of this one. Police say had it wanted to slip one to Gladney inside, but now needs an outlet, and it's to O'Donnell with 14 to shoot. O'Donnell trying to work inside. And they will have a timeout called on the floor by CUC. It'll be a full timeout on the floor. We'll take a quick one, too. 221 remaining here in the second half. CUC and IIT nodded at 53. You're watching Cougar Basketball brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A in Melrose Park. Eat more chicken. I just wanted to get good grades and to do well. But it also made me realize that I have a lot of career goals. You're there to get a full college experience. Not only participate in your sport, but participate in things outside of that. And it's all about growing as a person. My coaches have helped me with figuring out who I really am. Their lives are dedicated for us to succeed. Back tie guys, and once again, I'm CJ Solner with Irene Swift on the camera for you today. CUC and IIT and a good one here inside Geisman. 221 remaining in the second half. 53 all your score. IIT has been held to just 25% shooting by CUC here in the second half. CUC not shooting too much better at 31% as they wanted, they wanted to lob one inside to Gladney and they're going to get a foul on the inbound. So they're going to get... Mosley with a hold. The foul on Mosley is his second. Two free throws coming here for Gladney. Two twenty-one remaining here in the second half. Chance for Gladney to give the Cougars the lead here. First of two is up and good. Gladney with 15 points and 18 boards thus far. He's three of four from the free throw line here today. And Hassan Baspas will come back in, replacing Turner. CUC on a 7-1 run over the last two minutes and 35 seconds. Meeks and Baspas both in playing with four personals. Hizataki with four on the IIT side. Second free throw is good, and it's a two-point Cougar advantage. Dribbled right side, Muhammad. 
working off a screen. Hizataki and Baspis battling down inside. Hizataki tried to roll. They got it inside to Giorgio. Reverse layups, good, and it's 55 all. DiGiorgio now with 10 points and 10 boards, a double-double on the night. Handoff is to Meeks. Screen set, drive, layup, up, and good. 100 seconds remaining, it's a two-point CUC lead. And they're going to get a foul called on O'Donnell on the drive. That will be O'Donnell's fourth, double bonus, sending Mosley to the line. Mosley a 75% free throw shooter on the season. Minute, 50, minute 33 remaining. First is good. CUC with two timeouts remaining, IIT with four. Second free throw is good, and it's 57 all. See what Coach Rogers has drawn up here with 90 seconds remaining. Bass Bus has it at the top. Back to him with 17 to shoot. Threw it away, thought Meeks was going to go long for it. And IIT will take a timeout. It will be a full timeout on the floor. We'll take a quick one, too. Minute 11 remaining in this one, 57 all, your score. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Back inside Geisman Gymnasium, I'm CJ Selner. 57 all your score here with a minute 11 remaining here at regulation. It will be IIT ball coming out of the timeout. They'll have three timeouts remaining. CUC has two. It'll be interesting to see what Illinois Tech head coach Todd Kelly has drawn up here. You want to get it inside to Hizataki because he's been your most reliable player, especially inside. But you want to run time that's 23 seconds to shoot, a lot of basketball yet to be played. Both teams in the double bonus. Screen set for Muhammad at the top. Now to Mosley Jr. Get to screen. Now under 10, John Kiss with five, wanting to flip it inside and it's tipped away. Meeks has it, wants to drive. Tough shot inside, no good. His attack, he'll bring it down. 10 second difference between shot clock and game clock. Handoff will be to Mosley. Drama building here inside Geisman. Ten to shoot. Mosley has it, wants to drive, lost it, and Policier has it. In transition, Gladney has it. Layup, good with a foul! CUC takes a two-point lead. And that will be Hizataki's fifth personal. So it's a big free throw coming here. 11.8 seconds remaining in this one. So his Itaki's day is done. 11 points, 11 rebounds for the big man at IIT. 
He will get replaced by Jake Brunt. One free throw coming here for Gladney. He has 18 points and 18 boards. The free throw is no good. We'll see if they choose to call a timeout here. Mosley has it. Kicks Muhammad for a three. No good. Loose ball. O'Donnell has it, and they'll get a foul with .8 seconds remaining. CUC .8 seconds away from putting the finishing touches on an upset victory here at Geisman today. I think they're going to put a few ticks on the clock. They will put 1.2 seconds on the game clock here at Geisman. So two free throws, a chance for Neil O'Donnell to ice this one. The junior from Braidwood, Illinois. First of two is no good. One point two seconds remaining, so regardless, IIT can get a last second heave, a worst case to try to tie it. The free throw is up and good. And it's a three point game. IIT timeout. It will be a full timeout on the floor. We'll take a quick one. 1.2 seconds remaining here inside Geisman. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. Back in the guys, and once again, I'm CJ Seller, Irene Swift on the camera for you. 1.2 seconds remaining. CUC leading this one 60 to 57. Let's take another look at that breakaway layup that gave CUC the lead. CUC coming away with the turnover as Mosley lost it. Poissier doing a great job feeding ahead to Gladney, who was able to put the finishing touches and give CUC the lead. 1.2 seconds here. It will be John Kiss to inbound, guarded by Gladney. And they will call a, no, it will be a five second violation called on IIT before the timeout. So it'll be Cougar ball. And the Cougars will take a timeout. IIT tried to get the timeout in late, but it was too late as IIT gets called for the five-second violation. So CUC close to putting the final touch on a big upset victory here in the NAC. One point two seconds remain. See, Cougar women picking up a win over IIT earlier this afternoon here inside Geisman. Now it's up to the men to try to complete the sweep. It'd be the second straight sweep at home if CUC can hang on here. It'll be Neil O'Donnell to inbound. To Policier, and they'll get a foul called before the buzzer went off. So they're going to put time back on the clock inevitably. But one Policier free throw will result in anything, keep anything crazy from happening. You know, what's going to be one of the more memorable wins here at Geisman here in recent memory? 
they're going to put they're going to put three seconds back on the clock, or excuse me, point three seconds on the clock. So it'll have to almost be a tip heave for IIT. Policier trying to close this one out, and he does. Policier try, has one more to give. 61-57, and that will do it. CUC pulling the upset victory here at home over Illinois Tech here today. What a game this was here inside Geisman. Going over final totals for the game today, Landon Gladney put on an absolute show, 18 points and 18 rebounds in 38 minutes for the freshman. Mitch Policier with 14 points on the day. As CUC shoots 40% from the floor, they forced 19 IIT turnovers. For Illinois Tech, they shoot 35% from the floor, led by Hizataki with 10 points and 11 rebounds. DiGiorgio also had a double-double, 10 points and 11 rebounds. Cougar fans, CUC will be back in action on Tuesday night when they host Benedictine University. We'll be here to bring you that one as well. For Irene Swift on the camera, I'm CJ Selner. You can find more stats and info about Cougar basketball at cucougars.com. Have a good night, and we will talk to you Tuesday here from Geisman.